the city ready to proceed? Good morning. I'm the Code Enforcement Special Magistrate for today's hearing. I wanted to begin by explaining how this process is going to work. Uh, generally, we hear the building cases on the agenda first, then the city will call the cases as they appear on the agenda. If you've appeared at today's hearing, your case will be called before those cases where no one else has appeared. That is only true if you've signed in. So if you have not signed in, please see one of the officers in the back of the room. Once your case is called, I ask that you come down to the podium on my right-hand side right over here. The city will be over here. They will put on their testimony and evidence first, after which time you'll have an opportunity to review the evidence and ask questions of any of the city's witnesses. You will also have the opportunity to testify and present me with any witnesses or evidence of your own. Once I have heard the testimony and evidence, I will make a ruling. I will enter a written order either today at the hearing or in the next few days, which you'll receive a copy of. If you have any questions as we go through the process, please feel free to ask them. This is not meant to be a formal courtroom. The formal rules of evidence do not apply here. However, though this is not a formal courtroom, all testimony given today is given under oath. So if you're going to testify or you think you may testify, I'm going to ask that you stand and raise your right hand so that I can have you sworn in. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be truthful and accurate under penalty of perjury under the laws of the state of Florida? Please be seated. The city can call their first case. Agenda item number one, case number CE21050014, case address 326 Edgewood Drive. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm Richard McCoy with the West Palm Beach Building Department, uh, Building Inspector. I'm presenting this case for Tom Moore, also Building Inspector. He's, he's out on medical leave today. Um, this uh, was red tagged on 428. Mr. McCoy, can you speak into the, uh, the microphone? Yeah, thank you. That better? Much better. Okay. Um, this, this case was red tagged on 428 2021. Um, it was um, the notice of violation was posted on 9 15 2021. Uh, it was also sent out regular mail and certified mail on 9 15 2021. Um, the city is asking for an extension of 120 days and a hundred dollars a day after that. Ma'am, can you tell me your name, please? Molly Green. And what is your relationship to the owner in this case? I am the owner. My husband and I. Uh, Nuno Ismail? Is I, that, yeah. That's your husband? Yes. Okay. He's working. So tell me what's going on. Okay. So we had a back uh, cottage casita that we um, were, it was kind of like run down. We <laughs> wanted to make it right. What happened with the extension was we just had some issues i think uploading i thought things had been paid and put through and they just weren't we're actively working to get everything in order um, we have a few last steps to make on getting uh, some additional information that was needed to get the inspection done um, and we're close and we're asking for a little bit more time we're we're the city has offered you 120 days. That's beautiful. Uh, absolutely. All right. <laughs> so I'll give you. you I'll give you the 120 days. Thank so you very, if, very if much. If it's not completed after 120 days, there is subject to a fine of $100 per day. So you need to get it done. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. We're really. All right. In case CE21050014, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice is sufficient, find the property in violation of illicit code sections. Respondent has 120 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of up to $100 per day may issue. Thank, Thank you, you very in, much. Ma Agenda item number two, case number CE20030376, case address 401 50th Street.
Morning, Dan Kempa, Building Services, City of West Palm. This project was a public complaint back on um, 320 of 20. A developer was remodeling a large ap apartment complex. He was um, cited. Since then, he has obtained his permits and he was given a 180 day extension to get final inspections and put everything to rest. There is still standing permits that are open. The project's complete and the city would ask for 30 days to get final inspections and close permits out or $100 a day penalty. So is this an existing case? Is, this, is there already an order on this case? Pardon me? You said that this was previously cited back in March of 2020? Yeah, but, so, but they obtained permits as, yeah. as um, directed in the correction notice, and that gives them, when they get permits, they have 180 days. Did this come before a special magistrate at any point? No. No, okay, so this is the first time. Right. Okay, and so the, the, the violation that the city is concerned with is that um, while they've complied with a portion of the notice, which is to get the permits, they haven't gotten the required inspections to close those permits. Correct. Okay. And you're seeking to give them 30 days or $100 per day. Correct. And the work, the work in question here is electrical work? Well, there's actually um, a total renovation to the building, windows, interior, plumbing. Um, this particular one I'm representing today is the electrical. Yeah, but I can only address the, because it says in the agenda that right. this is failure to secure an electrical permit. Right. Okay. Have you had any contact with the owner in this particular case? No, I've, um, they're out of state and um, you get this, no response. So in this case, is the work is completed? As yes, it's already on the market under a realtor. So really all they have to do is call the city. That's it. Okay, so 30 days is more than sufficient to do yeah. that? Okay. All right. Mr. Kempa, could you please address the mailing and posting? Um, property was posted um, by me personally. Letter, mail certification was sent. It was also posted in the lobby at City Hall. So it was posted on the property and at City Hall and, was, and the notice was sent by certified mail? Correct. Okay. All right, in case CE20030376, I make the following findings of fact and law. I find notice is sufficient. I find the property in violation of listed code sections. Respondent has 30 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of up to $100 per day may issue. Thank you. Agenda item number three, case number CE21060139, case address 2451, Presidential Way, Unit A. Welcome back, Inspector McCoy. <laughs> Okay, um, Richard McCoy with the City of West Palm Beach Building Department. Um, this this uh, residence was red tagged on 6-8-2021. Uh, the notice of violation was posted on 9-15-2021. It also was sent regular mail and certified mail. Um, the city is asking for 120 days and $50 a day after that. They already have um, applied for their permit. It's just a matter of getting it through through the department and then you know getting their inspections. Can you just tell me what the underlying violation is? What did you observe on the property? Um, it was plumbing and um, structural for um, three bathrooms. So they were doing three bathrooms without a permit. Yes. Okay. Ma'am, can you tell me your name, please? Joanne Smith. And you are the owner of the property? Yes, sir. So tell me what's going on. 
I purchased this property, it was in distress, it had been sitting on the market for a while, so I purchased it for myself with the intent to renovate what needed to be finished. They had already ripped out a lot of things, so I hired a contractor to provide me with all the help. He disappeared with my money and Goodness. no permits, so I had to regroup. Since then, I've gotten my windows put in, we passed permits, and we've cleaned up the mess. Well, we, I have, and I've begun to clean up the mess that was left behind from the other people. I've since sent with Mr. Uh, Battles, I believe it is, and uh, planning and zoning, and to re get the permits, and we are now in permitting. So City I've gotten an architect, you. turned in the plans. The city's offered to give you 120 days to get your permits. Is that a sufficient amount of time? Yes, sir. I'd also like to apologize to Inspector from McCoy for any problems coming out. I certainly, that was not my intention. Not a word. I'm sure he appreciates the apology. It's very rare in this business. <laughs> um, I'm, and to take the court's time for this, I'm very, very sorry. I inherited a very, not inherited, bought a bigger mess than my brain, heart, soul, or purse dis <laughs> realized. Well, that, that sometimes happens. Uh, uh, Inspector McCoy, you were seeking uh, 120 days, and what was the fine you were seeking? Um, uh, $50 a day after that. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter an order extending the amount of time for you to get the permits for 120 days, after which time it'll, the property will be subject to a fine of $50 per day. So it's very important that you comply within those 120 days, okay? Yes, I will. All right, okay, CE 21060139, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice it's sufficient, I find the property in violation of listed code sections. Respond that has 120 days to bring the property into compliance or a fine of up to $50 per day may issue. Good luck. Thank you, sir. And once again, I apologize. Agenda item number four, case number CE21080039, case address 3800 Washington Road, unit 709. Good morning, my name is Paul Tharp, plumbing inspector for City of West Palm Beach. And we decided a red tag um, for no permit on 8-321 and uh, we've received proper service by posting on the site and with the city hall and regular mail. And they installed a floor, uh, marble tile, and installed a shower pan with no permit. Have you had contact with the owner of the property? He's called me one time and I just let him know that he's gotta get the per you know permits. Did you also send notice via certified mail? Yes, sir. And what remedy is the city seeking here? Um, 30 days and $100 a day. Is 30 days a sufficient amount of time for them to be able to obtain the permits in this case? It's been already two months that we've posted it. Yeah, I, I know. Um, <laughs> and the idea of giving them more time must be extremely irritating, but I, from, sure. my, from my seat, I have to make sure that whatever I order them to do, it's capable of being done, right. right? So if I say you have to get your permits in 30 days, that has to be reasonable. In other words, if they went in in the next, you know, once they got a copy of this order, they, they need to have a sufficient amount of time for them to actually do that. So the question I'm really asking you is, can they get this done in 30 days? I think so. The work's already being completed. Okay. And you say you just had one conversation with them? Yes, sir. I'm going to push it out to 45 days, just in an abundance of caution under the circumstances. Okay. But um, KCE 21080039, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient to find the property in violation of the listed code sections. So I'm going to give the respondent 45 days to come to compliance or a fine of up to $100 per day, may issue. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a good day. Jumping to agenda item number 43, case number CE21080244, case address 2995 45th Street. Mr. 
You said 43, right? Yes. Good morning. City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On, Officer McFarland, uh, hold on one second. Is there somebody here for uh, this case? Is that why we're hearing it now? No, no, we have it? a city employee here from a different department who needs to return back ah, to the office. Okay, good enough. Go ahead, Officer McFarland. On August 17th, the, the property at 2995 45th Street was cited for repeat irrequitable um, tree trimming standards and tree abuse. Uh, property was posted August, August 19th. Certified mail was sent August 18th. Certified mail was received August 24th. Um, I, I do have our senior landscape planner to speak on the irrequitable part of this on violation. Come on up. Good morning, Special Magistrate Ray Carancy, Senior Landscape Planner. Ray, were you? Oh, yes, were, I was. You were. Yes, okay. yes, I was sworn in. Thank you. Um, this tell is me about a, some trees. What's that? Pardon me. So tell me about some trees. Yeah, they, they, this is a um, an expansion of an existing gas station racetrack, and permits were approved, including a tree alteration permit to relocate um, five oak trees. Uh, on the site and one was particular that one right there is particularly large um, in order to preserve the tree canopy um, that was done and then an inspection was done in August uh, what was the what was the date Andrew? what August 10th uh, by Andrew Barnett Burnett who is the um, the landscape planner and the inspector and found that the trees had been these trees had died <laughs> Uh, due to lack of water and that there had been abuse of the trees that were supposed to be protected by construction equipment and that the contractor had improperly pruned other trees. So they really weren't paying much attention to what they were supposed to be doing, preserving the trees. All right, so let me see if I follow you so far. So there were five trees, uh, according to the landscape plan, they were supposed to be moved and preserved. They moved them, but they didn't take care of them when they moved them, so they, they weren't properly watered and they were subject to construction abuse during that time period. Correct. Okay. The, um, we did speak to the contractor and the landscape architect on the, on the job there, and a, an arborist report was generated on what conditions the trees were in, which verified everything that we had seen. And the tree alteration permit was reissued with conditions um, that they had to, uh, that they were going to be cited. They had to resolve the, the code case before they could get their CO for, the, for completing the job. So that's where we're at. Are these trees salvageable or, or are they? No, the, 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 when the tree alteration permit was reissued, um, they were required to revise the landscape plan and replace the trees that had died, albeit with much smaller trees, obviously, and pay the difference of the tree canopy mitigation into the tree, can tree mitigation fund for the city. So that has been resolved as far as the tree canopy and what's required by the code but the, the fact remains that the contractor did not care about what was going on with the trees did not look after them as they were required so that's why we were seeking a fine okay so what's the city seeking from me um honestly um at first, we were we were looking at a five thousand dollar fine, but since they did everything that they were supposed to with um, revising the plan and 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 getting the arborist report um, that we had discussed uh, a one thousand dollar fine, but we, we want to make sure that the, the the contractor learns from this experience not to not to do this again. That strikes me as reasonable under the circumstances. Um, is there anyone here on behalf of the respondent? All right. Is there anything further? Nope, that's it. All right, in case CE21080244, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice is sufficient, I find the property in violation of the listed code sections. I make further finding that said violation constitutes a irreparable violation, and I hereby assess a one-time fine of $1,000. Thank you. 
Agenda item number seven, case number CE21080331, case address 440 27th Street. Good morning. Joe Patrick, West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This case is in reference to a single family residence property that was issued a notice of violation via certified mail and posting at the property and at City Hall for trash and debris on the property excessive storage in the front screen room of the property that can be seen from the sidewalk and recycling bins being stored in public view there on the street for an extended period of time. The notice of violation was issued on August 26th and gave the respondent five days to remove the recycling bins, <coughs> excuse me, and 30 days to remove the trash, debris, and outside storage. After the notice of violation was issued, I was contacted by the respondent, Mr. Martinez, and we discussed uh, ways he can come into compliance. Our reinspection of the property yesterday revealed the property remains out of compliance with code sections 18106A. There's still trash and debris on the property, particular pieces of concrete and a uh, large pile with a tarp covering it towards the backyard, which can be seen from the sidewalk. 7434A1J, the recycling bins have been removed from the street. However, they're now being stored, or at least they were yesterday being stored um, on the driveway or by the driveway in view from the sidewalk and 94271A, excessive outdoor storage. There is still excessive storage on the front patio. The city is asking for compliance within 30 days or a $100 day fine be assessed. Sir, can you tell me your name please? Uh, yes, I'm Juan Martinez, I'm the owner of the property. And your honor, I would like to request uh, 60 days instead of 30. My mom has been ill and she lives in Pembroke Pines. So between my work and taking care of her, um, you know, it's been taking a toll on me and I just need time to get some of that stuff cleaned out. I realize I need to do it, but I just need a little more time, please. No problem for the 60 days for the outdoor storage um, or in the, in the debris on the property, but the recycling bins, I would ask they be removed you oh, know, yeah. immediately if you could. Yeah, like I said, I've removed them already. I didn't realize that my driveway would not be a, an area to put them in. I mean, they can't be. The, they can't be in, like yeah. by the alleyway. You're going to see a bunch of those um, recycle bins there. So I, I wasn't sure what the difference was between my driveway and the alleyway. They can't be view, viewable from the street. I, I'm sorry. They have to be stored in a way that they're not viewable from right, the street. Right, but I'm saying when it, when I go through my alleyway and that street, I see a bunch of you know recycle bins there so yeah I, I can't speak for those but in this yeah. particular no, I case know. Yeah. I'm just saying okay. yeah all right this Since is what I'll do in case uh, CE21080331 make the following findings of fact and law if I notice is sufficient I find the property in violation of 94271A 18106A and 7434A1J respondent has five days to come into compliance with 7434A1J that's the recycling bin and the respondent has 60 days to come into compliance with 94271A and 18106A. The absence of compliance, a fine of up to $100 per day may issue. Thank you. All right, good Thank luck, you, sir. Thank you, Thank you. Appreciate it. Agenda item number 28, case number CE21090247, case address 1220 Wellington Street. Which number is this? 28. Go ahead, Officer Williams. Okay. Uh, Michael Williams, Code Enforcement Officer, City of West Palm Beach. Uh, property 1220 Wellington Street was initially cited on 92121. Certified mail was sent on 92221. Uh, we do have a signed certified mail receipt on file. The property as well as City Hall was posted on 92121. 21 uh, Property was cited for 74-34-A-1-J. Uh, uh, garbage can placement 94-42-A. Uh, parking requirements and 94-71-C <coughs> outdoor storage. Um, I noted on last evening that the vehicles that were typically being parked onto unapproved surfaces were moved um, and so um, I think it's safe to say that that portion of the violations have complied. 
but all of the other uh, violations remain. Um, I did speak to the property owner, uh, Mr. Solomon, uh, this morning, um, and we did discuss uh, the violations and we uh, came to consensus um, that he be given 15 days in order to comply or a fine of $100 per day be imposed. Sir, can you tell me your name, please? My name is Bernard Solomon. Mr. Solomon, the city tells me that, uh, that you can get this uh, into compliance within 15 days. Is that accurate? That's correct. Okay. And you're not going to park those vehicles on the grass anymore? Well, that's my tenant, so I talk, I'm going to talk to them because and I got enough parking for them. I don't know why they park in there. Yeah, it's important because at the end of the day, since you're the owner of the property, the city's going to come after you if they continue to violate it. So it's important that you make it clear to them that they cannot do that, okay? You yeah, understand. So. All right. In case CE2109024, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient. I find the property in violation of 7434A1J and 9471C. Responded as 15 days to come in compliance or a fine of $150 per day, may All right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Agenda items number 51 through 68. It's the same owner, um, like same I've violations. Heard this one yes. Deja vu. So I will call all of them. In order. Agenda item number 51, case number CE2105-0313, case address 1023, The Point Drive. Agenda item number 52, case number CE2105-0314, case address 1027, The Point Drive. Agenda item number 53, case number CE2105-0316, case address 1045, The Point Drive. Agenda item number 54, case number CE2105-0317, case address 1051, The Point Drive. Agenda item number 55, case number CE2105-0318, case address 1053, The Point Drive. Agenda item number 56, case number CE2105-0319, case address 1061, The Point Drive. Agenda item number 57, case number CE2105-0320, case address 1063, The Point Drive. Agenda item number 58, case number CE2105-0321, case address 1065, The Point Drive. Agenda item number 59, case number CE2105-0322, case address 1069, The Point Drive. Agenda item number 60, case number CE2106-0110, case address 1125, The Point Drive. Agenda item number 61, case number CE2106-0111, case address 1133, The Point Drive. <coughs> Excuse me. Agenda item number 62, case number CE2106-0113, case address 1153, The Point Drive. Agenda item number 63, case number CE2106-0116, case address 1157, The Point Drive. Agenda item number 64, case number CE2106-0118, case address 1187, The Point Drive. Agenda item number 65, case number CE2106-0121, case address 1207, The Point Drive. Agenda item number 66, CE Case, case number CE2106-0122, case address 1129, The Point Drive, has complied. Agenda item number 67, case number CE2106-0125, case address 1235, The Point Drive, has also complied. And agenda item number 68, case number CE2106-0126, case address 1221, The Point Drive. Okay, so... I, I feel like I've heard this one before, but uh, tell did. me again what's going on here. It's, okay, good morning, Officer Levine, City of West Palm Beach 
code enforcement. All these properties were cited for failure to obtain a rental license and certificate of use. They were all signed for, certified may were all signed for in June of uh, 2021. Um, they were also processed on June 15, 2021, and an email was dispatched to the property manager on June 15, 2021, stating that they were processed and notifying the inspector for an inspection. We haven't been able to get to these inspections, so the city is requesting 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day thereafter with regards to this. So the rental license has been applied for? The license has been applied for, the application in the system. And these are the last of... So we're just waiting on the city's inspection? Yes. Right. Sir, can you tell me your name again? <laughs> Carl Duvall. And you, sir, are the, as I recall, the property manager for the property, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. So the city tells me that we're waiting on inspections on these properties. That is correct. Is there any reason we can't get that done in 30 days? No, there's no reason. I'm sorry? There's no reason we can get it done. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to give you the 30 days. What was the fine the city was seeking here? 200. I'm sorry? 200. All right, I'm going to give you the 30 days to get it done. I, I'm not sure why these keep coming back other than, you know, and I, I don't want to reopen the, the back and forth between you two, but just get the inspection so I don't have to keep seeing this and you don't have to keep coming, all right? Special Marshal, the reason why we keep coming back is it was, it was probably about 100 and almost 200 uh, units. And I didn't want it to, to fill one agenda with all those units. You Fair know, enough. It's, it's different PCN numbers. It's not to say, well, look, I could cite Are, are we mostly done? <laughs> We're done. This well, is this, the this last, is the last batch? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> all right. Um, in cases, and I'm not going to repeat all the case numbers, so I'm just going to say for this, this is the order for all of the cases, CE uh, from 51 to 68, except for the two that are complied. We will... Um, so in those cases, I'm going to find that there is an existing violation of 18162A and 2232A. Respondent has 30 days to bring the properties in compliance by obtaining the inspections or a fine of up to $200 per day for each case in which it is not in compliance shall be issued. I thank you, sir. Good luck. I hope you all get it done. Okay. That was like a third of the agenda. Agenda item number 13, case number CE2109-0010, case address 3021 Windsor Avenue. They're negotiating. Agenda item number five, case number CE2108-0122, case address 557th Street. Yes. City of West Palm Beach, Co compliance Robert Watkins. <clears throat> the property at 557th Street. Robert, Officer can you Watkins, speak into you're going to have to talk into the mic a little bit better there. Seat of West Palm Beach Code Compliance, Officer Robert Watkins. The property of five. Say again. Ready? Ready? The property at 557th Street was cited on August 11th. Certified mail was sent August 11th. Certified mail was received on August 13th. The property was cited for. 94-71-C, 94-302-A-4, and 18-106-B. Compliant violations were 18-106-B. Remaining violations are 94-71-C, 94-302-A-4. The city is requesting additional 30 days or $50 per day after. I've had communication with the homeowner once, uh, advised her of the things that need to be taken care of, and if she replaced the whole slit that she would need a permit for it, and I haven't heard back from her, and she replaced two of the slits, the six by nine slits in there with no permit, and there's still trash debris on the, uh, on the swell side of her property. So the, the violations in question here are the condition of this fence? Yes, sir. And the, uh, the strat, there's trash and debris on the property? Yes, sir. 
Any reason that she couldn't come into compliance with the fence issue in 30 days? Did no, she, she just needs to apply and receive a permit. The fence is already up. She just replaced larger sections that when you replace them that large, you do need a permit for it. I just simply applying for it and receiving it because it's already there. Okay. And, uh, and you've had some communication with her? But yeah, once, and uh, I just let her know what, what all was going on, what she would need to do if she replaced the whole sections of it, and I'm having her back after that. And she did actually replace whole sections? Yes, yeah, she did. Yeah. Okay. And service was by posting and certified mail? Yes, sir. All right, in case CE21080122, I make the following findings of fact and life find notice is sufficient on the property in violation of 94302A4 and 9471C. Respond has 30 days to come to compliance or fine of up to $50 per day, make sure. Recalling agenda item number 13, case number CE21090010, case address 3021 Windsor Avenue. Morning. Hey, my Officer first question Phil. is: Y'all have your pictures put up on the TV screen. Is there a way I can have my pictures put up on the TV screen? Well, you can certainly show them to me. But right. but hold on one second and let let me have the officer introduce the case so we know what we're talking about. Officer Phil Cartwright, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement, uh, reporting a case today for uh, Code Officer Raymond Leon. Her property was originally cited on September 2nd of 2021 for landscape maintenance and fence repair. Service was achieved by certified mail. The property was posted on September 2nd of 2021, as well as City Hall. The grass has actually been cut on the property, but the only violation that still exists is the fence repair. The city is asking that the property come into compliance within 10 days or $50 per day thereafter. So the city is not proceeding under 18106K, the landscaping? The landscape maintenance has been complied. So that's been complied. So yes, it's sir. just a question about the fence. That is correct. And what's the, the, I guess that's, what's the city's argument about the fence? I guess it's, uh, it's leaning, is that it? Um, the, the fence is leaning and then there are some slats that are missing Tell in the, the back. Truth. Tell them the truth. We just oh, sir, hold on, hold on. One, I promise I will let you have an opportunity to say anything you'd like to say, but I can't have you talking over the officer, okay? So the problems that are in question are to the back of the property, um, where the fence is actually dilapidated in the back. The owner has some issues with the fact that he's saying the fence is not actually on his property. Um, according to Papa, it basically doesn't highlight whether the fence is on his property or not. But when I walked into the backyard, the fence actually has support beams that are inside the fence, which is basically a presumption of privacy for the property owner who owns that property. The beams are not on the outside of the fence. But he's here to basically rebut that, so you can hear the rest from him. So. All right, sir. Can you tell me your name, please? My name is Robert Little. I don't, were you sworn in earlier, sir? I guess so. I don't know. What? Did you come at the beginning? Were you here at 9 a.m.? No, he wasn't. No. All right, sir, can you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be truthful and accurate under penalty of perjury and the laws of the state of Florida? I do. All right. Sir, what is your relationship to the company? Owner. Thank you. You're the owner of Sunshine State Acquisitions? Sir? Yes, that's the company that owns the property. And you're the owner of that company? Yes. Okay. The floor is yours. Tell me what you want me to know. All right. This is not the code enforcement officer that I started out with. About four months ago, he cited me for, I don't, if you can stop going through pictures and we can stop on each picture and we can discuss it, there was a blue fence straight up the driveway that was dilapidated. I never put up that fence, and I've owned this property since 1996. I know who put it up, and it was not on my property, but it was, it was dilapidated. And he asked me, we can see this from the road. Can you just remove it? I said, that's on the railroad property. It's not on my property. You may assume that it's my fence, but I know who put it up, and I didn't put it up. And when it was put up, it was purposely put up on the railroad property because there is some poles in the ground that, had, that, that used to have a chain link fence there, which are on my property line. The fence is behind my property line. So I said, okay, man, 
I'll remove that fence because you can see it from the road. And he said, also on the left-hand side, you have a small little fence on the left front of the property with a couple with a couple broken boards. I said, I have time today. I'll take care of that for you. I called him back within two hours, and he says, perfect. A month and a half later, he cites me again. I forgot what he cited me for. And then, and then I called him up and said, why don't you just call me? You know, I'll work with you. And he says, well, I have, to, I, I have to do it this way. I said, whatever. You know, you got my phone number. Call me if you got a problem. I'll work with you. And then I got cited again for the fence on the south side of the property. Can you stop on that picture? You can see where the chain link pole is yeah. on my property line. The fence is behind it, which is, which is on the railroad property that hasn't been taken care of for, for over six years. That is my property line there. He cited me for the fence on the south side of the property just because the ugly side of the fence or the post side of the fence is on my side. So the code enforcement officer assumed that that was my fence. I then called the head of code enforcement and discussed it with them. I said, go on Papa and look at where the fence is and where the property line is. He says, I'm not gonna do that. I said, well, someone's gotta to, got to use some common sense and figure out this because that fence was put in with the lady owner of the property about 12 years ago. She did it without a permit. I didn't say anything, but she put in the fence herself. Can I bring a picture up to up to sure. you so since I can't have my pictures put up on the board? Just show it to the officer first. I've already showed it to him. Does the city have any objection? My to property line. Hold on, hold on one second. Does the city have any objection to the photo that he's going to show me? No, sir. Okay. Yeah. All right. Before I walk up, I'm just going to explain this to you so, I, so I'm not up in front of you. All right. You. Well, explain it on the mic so it gets caught on me. Sir, you have to sir, talk you need to mic. speak into bottom the microphone, the please. Has the road. The left hand side, you can see. You have to, sir. Is. You have to speak into the mic. I'm speaking. The mic's right there. Yeah, but the, it, it's the TV has to be able to pick it up. The bottom of the picture is the road. The left hand side of the property line that's highlighted shows my property line being even with the roof of, my, of, of the building. The fence, when, when the lady put it up, she assumed that the equal distance between the two buildings was the property line, which it was not. The fence is clearly on the neighbor's, prop, on, on, on the neighbor's property, and by, on the neighbor's property by about four to five feet. But no one wanted to investigate it. They wanted to pull me into code enforcement for this. And so I'm not, do, wait, let me uh, let me ask the city. How, how do we know where the fence is? In the case file, there are pictures of exactly where the fence is. Can you run through those real quick, please? I mean, do we have Just, any evidence that the fence is on which not, piece of flip, property? Flip to another one. Whoever's doing pictures. Oh, hold on one sec, sir. Just, I mean, the the respondent's yeah. argument is that he can't be responsible for the fence because it's not on his property. So, what would how would the city rebut that argument? Hold on one second. Hold on. Let's let's just get to the picture you had, which is a more clear picture of the backyard going down. Well, let me let me let the city respond to my question. Keep going. Just keep I just going. Want to catch the picture, and it'll it'll be okay. right there. Stop right there. Right there is the fence on the south side of the property. So that that's on the south side. All the support beam support beams are on the inside. My property line runs probably six inches off that roof line all the way down. That's how the property was built in 1960. That fence is clearly on the neighbor's property. And Papa, the maps on Papa are within 12 inches in these pictures. They're pretty accurate. Now, if the city wishes to pay for a survey, we'll go and do a survey and we can do that. I've never had a survey on the property because I've never put up a fence on my property. I'm not in business, put up fences. 
I'm sorry, go ahead. Mark Joyce, Code Enforcement. Um, we can't go by the Papa um, aerials. They're, they're way off. You know, in many cases, uh, they're, they're sometimes taken at an angle, which makes a roof look like it's on the proper line, but it's not. Obviously, we would need a survey to determine where, or see a property corner or something to that effect to, uh, to determine where the, um, the fence is. Well, it's impossible for me sitting up here to know whether or not this property, this fence is on the property. The respondent says it's not. Uh, I mean, I, I get the city's argument, right, which is who would construct a fence in this particular way if it wasn't to serve this particular property. I, that makes some degree of sense to me. But it's also possible that somebody just built this fence wrong and it's not on the right property, which would mean that, that the respondent is not responsible are, for it. Are there property corners in on the property? I haven't been out there to look, but I know who put up the fence. The lady next door put up the fence, and she, is, she has since sold the property. And I only assume that the new buyer th assumes that that is my fence and that is not being maintained. But she put up, she, she put up the fence facing the wrong way. I never said anything because it didn't really bother me. And actually, it was an improvement to the property. But that fence is not on my property. I mean, you, you can even look at the picture of the angles of how the property is and that fence would not be on my property. I mean, to, to, to say Papa is not accurate, Papa is, is extremely accurate. What happens with the aerials on Papa, they're, they're taken at angles so that you, when a building comes up from the ground, it doesn't, it looks like the uh, property line could be right next to a, a roof or even into a building if it's a, if it's a tall enough building, but it's not. All right, look at the right-hand side of the property. Papa is pretty darn accurate on the right-hand side of the property, going well, down the center, I, I mean, with, the, I, I, with I the dividing of the road on the right-hand side. Now look at the left-hand side. They're pretty darn accurate. All right, well, well, hold on a second. Even if, oh, wait, wait, even wait, if hold, Papa was hold, off hold, by 12 hold. inches or 14 hold. inches. All right, let's stop for a second. As I sit here, I don't know where this fence is and on what property it sits. So what I need the city to do is the city needs to make an investigation in and establish by some preponderance of the evidence on whose property this fence sits, because I don't think there's sufficient evidence as it sits before me to do that. If, uh, if it's on the neighbor's property, then that's who they need to be cited, and if it's on uh, the respondent's property, then they need to bring it back at that point. But I, unless you've got additional evidence, I don't have enough information in which to make a determination here. Okay, I understand. Now, the other, the other fence that is in question here is the fence on the back of the property. That fence was put in 14 years ago by someone who worked for the railroad because my tenant in the back had kids walking out, on, walking out on the railroad tracks. And he asked me, could he put up a fence? I said, put it behind this pole because this is the property line. And we looked at the pole right there. That fence is sitting behind the pole on railroad property that hasn't been maintained for over four years. So it's, it's the same issue to me, which is the city, if, when you can establish which property it's on, cite the, because I think we can all agree that the, the fence is in disrepair and somebody should fix it. The question is who needs to fix it, and I think we need more information than we have here today. Uh, so I'm going to table this. Um, if, uh, if it's not on the respondent's property, then dismiss the case and bring it on the right one. If it is on the respondent's property, bring it back, and then we'll deal with it then. But I need more evidence than I have here today. Is, is the respondent saying that the chain link fence is on his property? The chain link fence pole is on oh, my property. The chain link fence has since since then been removed. Oh, that that's would a fair also point. have to and be removed. that was put on before I even bought the property and missing. I just never removed yeah. the pole. The pole would have to be removed. I mean that would be I, I can remove a property. pole, but that's not in question right now. Let's let us let us be common sense. You called me in and I tried to work with code enforcement. I, I think I even called you to work this out also. You, you did. You did and, and that's you why were I sent the Not code even helpful out. on the phone. And you know you uh, right. okay. you want the you want the <laughs> You want the all residents right. to work. All right, all right. let me let me do this because the city's point about the pole is correct. That is that's a chain link fence that is not a chain link fence. So that's I was clearly, using that as a property yeah. marker. Yeah. Well, that clearly has to be removed. <laughs> okay. So and that we know is on your property. So that I can that I can I, I can give the city that you you need to remove the chain link thing. So I I'll make the finding on that. As to the issue of uh, of the rest of the fences, I'm going to table this case until and unless the city can bring evidence that the fence is actually on your property. Um, if not, the city needs to dismiss this. So I, I'll give the, uh, how long does the city need to, to investigate this? 30 days. All right, I'll give the no, city. No, 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 they were giving me 10 days, give them 10 days. No, I'm going to give the, the city. At the beginning of this, they gave me 10 days to comply. I'm going to give the city 30 days to figure out where the fence is. All right, All right. we got another problem here still. We're not finished. I'm finished. I'm being cited for vegetation. 
constantly. You're not, you're not being cited for vegetation. Well, I was cited for vegetation. Well, it's okay? not in front of me now. The only thing in front Why of me Why are the medians 28 inches high in grass, two blocks from sir, me, one sir, block from me, the and next door? I'm not a city council member. I don't deal with any of that stuff. The only issue before me was 94302A4. So you say you're in compliance with 18106K, so it's so not it's an do issue. as I say, not as I do. Is this, the, is this how no, the city operates? No, I, I can't speak to that. You have to under, I mean, sir, listen to me very carefully. I can deal with issues that are brought to me as a violation. All right. That's also, the, that is the entire scope of my authority. The only issue that the city says is an issue on your property is the fence. All right. And the best I can tell is I don't know where While that I'm fence here, is. While I'm here, I'm issuing a trespass warning for the city on my property. All observations will be done from the property lines. Yeah. They will not go in my backyard. It's a clear trespass warning. This has been brought up in code enforcement before that they can't stand in the bed, in the bed of their trucks and take pictures. They can't walk in the backyards of people's property. They have to view everything from the property line. So th I have issued a trespass warning. This is, right. th this is getting pretty petty. I mean, I've owned this thing since it, 1996, it, it, it and now y'all like are, are looking at a pole in the ground to remove that you can't even see from the road. It's bothering nobody. The lady in the back hangs her clothes on that pole. I but, you appreciate know, that. Why right. are we getting so petty? <laughs> I can't. The only thing I can do is deal with the violations that are brought in this particular case that's a chain link that looks like a chain link fix that's in disrepair All right, so are we that. you can't see it from the road so are, are we clear that the city is has notice of I, no I'm, trespassing I'm not, on I'm my not, property I've that trespass issues and things like that are beyond the scope of code enforcement All right it's then i have fair. to go down the police yeah. down the police yeah, if, if you the feel like somebody's trespassing on your property trespassing for contact, code enforcement. The, contact the police all right so in this case i'm going to give the city 30 days to figure out the uh, issue related to the fence either establish it's on the property or dismiss the case. And uh, I'm going to give the respondent, uh, I'll give you the same 30 days to do something with that chain link fence. All right, how is the city going to notify me that they've done their job? Well, they're either because... going to dismiss the case or bring it. All right. Where are we now? Just confirming we have no other respondents present. No, okay. Agenda item number six, case number CE21080325, case address 4011 Windsor Avenue. Good morning, Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance. 4011 Windsor Avenue was cited on August 24th of 2021. The property and city hall were posted on August 27th of 2021 and certified mail was sent on August 26th of 2021. The property was cited for 18-162A, 22-32A, and 7434A1H. I've had no contact with the property owner all violations um, remain. The city is asking for an additional 30 days or $200 per day until compliance is achieved. So the things at issue here are the rental license and the, and the trash can? Correct. And this property is being currently rented? Um, there are multiple uh, mailboxes and on Pretty much every time I go in my zone, those there are different cars there. So there are tenants, but um, it was previously cited, but it was going through a foreclosure. So that case was closed by the city. So it's just being recited. But you've observed tenants on the property. Correct. All right, in case uh, CE21080325, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice sufficient from the property in violation of 18162A and 2232A and 7434A1H. Respondent has 30 days to come to compliance or fine of up to $200 per day, may issue. Thank you. Agenda item number eight, case number CE21070199, case address 412 43rd Street. Good morning, Christopher Thompson, City of West Palm Co-Compliance. Property at 412 43rd Street was cited on July 19th, 21. Notice of violation in City Hall was posted on July 20th, 21. Property was cited for outdoor storage, trash can placement, overgrowth, and an inoperable vehicle on site. 
As of yesterday, the property was still not in compliance. I have made contact with the homeowner. He's requesting an additional 30 days to come into compliance or $100 a day until compliance is achieved. Notice through posting and certified mail? Yes, July 20th. And you talk to the owner, do they think they can get this done in 30 days? Yes. Okay, in case CE2107199 and make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice this sufficient, if I'm the property in violation of 34102A, 18106B, 7434A1J, and 9471C. Responded as 30 days to come to clients or fine of $100 per day issue. Thank you. Agenda item number nine, case number CE210802, <clears throat> excuse me, 0282, case address 3131 Vincent Road. Good morning, Sony Vincent, City of West Palm Beach, Code Enforcement. This property was cited on August 20th. Property was posted on August 24th. Certified mail was sent on August 20th. The property was cited for codes 94446-2B1 and 94462B3. I have not made contact with the property owner. After um, the property was improperly um, pruned of the trees in the front of the property. After my reinspection, the trees are growing back to its natural form. The city is, at this time, the city is requesting a finding of fact to um, prevent further improper um, pruning of the trees. Yeah, that looks like the definition of hat racking, huh? Yes. And you've had no contact with the owner? No contact. So that was the photos before. I did, um, I spoke that to- that tree survived that, huh? I'm sorry? You said it's fortunate that tree survived that kind of treatment. Yes. All right, in case uh, CE2108028 and make the following findings of fact on life, I notice is sufficient. Find the property in violation of, uh, or having been in violation of 944462B1 and 944462B3. Thank you. Agenda item number 10, case number CE2108 0214, case address 837 4th Street. Office of Phil Cartwright, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. The property at 837 4th Street was originally cited on August 16th of 2021 for excessive overgrowth, landscape maintenance, boarding certificate, failure to comply within 10 days, painting of boards. Service was achieved by certified mail. The property was posted on August 16th of 2021 as well as City Hall. All violations are still current. The city is asking that the property come into compliance within 10 days or abatement. Is this an abandoned property? Yes, sir, it is. Let's see, we got excessive growth, landscape maintenance. I see the boarding. Can you tell me about the, uh, the health, safety, and uh, welfare issue here? Um, it's extremely overgrown. I mean, there's um, all types of vermin and raccoons that are in a mango tree in the backyard, so. Do you believe this property constitutes a threat to the neighbors and children? Yes, sir. I assume it's not locked and it's easily accessible? Yes, sir, that is correct. All right, in case, uh, I guess, and you haven't had any contact with Blue Door Group Holdings? No, sir. Posting and certified mail? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, in case CE2108021, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice this sufficient, find the property in violation of 18106B, 18106K, 18214A, 18215A, 18265, and 943024. I make further finding that said violations constitute a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the city of West Palm Beach. I order the respondent to come into compliance with the section within 10 days. In the absence of compliance, I hereby authorize the city to enter the property and abate any and all violations. I hereby assess the cost of the abatement against the property and property owner. Thank you. Agenda item number 11, case number CE2108-0286, case address 831 North Olive Avenue is rescheduled. 
Agenda item number 12, case number CE21090007, case address 938 31st Street is also rescheduled. Agenda item number 14, case number CE21070183, case address 433 Kern Street. Good morning, Officer Luster, West Palm Code. This property was cited for failure to obtain a, a fence permit, garbage can placement, business tax receipt, uh, fence and wall maintenance, landscaping front yard, landscaping parkway and or swell, and removing a prohibited vehicles, trailer and uh, commercial truck, and outdoor storage. I've had no contact with the property owner and certified mail was signed on 7-21-2021. Posting was 9-10-2021. I'm asking for 30 days or $50 per day after. Did you post the city and the property? Yes, sir. 9-10. All right, let's see. So where's the garbage can? Oh, you, yes. If you start over, oh, you're going a little fast. There see? it is, okay. You see one right there? What the business tax receipt is? Are they conducting? Is he's function? running um, his landscape business from the property? That's okay. what the trailer has in it. Garbage can is in front of that particular trailer. It's several garbage cans, um, and I know he's doing it because I've seen him moving the equipment back and forth. Okay. The fence is in disrepair. It looks like. Yes, it's in disrepair. He's also put in put in fencing without a permit. Okay, so that fence, that white fence is not permitted? Yes, sir. It's permitted once you get a permit. Yeah, but, but he hasn't obtained a permit. Yeah, he has no permit for any other fencing. I can see the grass issue. Mm -hmm. I can see the swell. Commercial vehicles on the property. And yeah, it's actually a commercial truck that's behind that trailer yeah. now. Uh, see it? And you said you have no contact with the owner? No, sir. No contact with the owner. Doesn't respond when you knock on the door, I guess? Nope. No contact. I've only met a cat. <laughs> okay. I don't know that cat. All right. In case uh, CE21070183, and make the following findings of fact and life, I notice is sufficient to find the property in violation of 105.1, 7434A1J, 82144, 9430283. 4, 94442C1, 94442E, 94487B1, and 9471C. Responded as 30 days to come to clients or final up to $50 per day mission. Okay. Thank you. Agenda item number 15, case number CE21070228, case address 732 Nathan Hale Road has complied. Agenda item number 16, case number CE21080126, Case address 951 Macy Street has complied. Agenda item number 17, case number CE21070324, case address 716 Flamingo Drive. <clears throat> Don Williams, Code Enforcement, 716 Flamingo Drive, was cited for 18106B, excessive growth, 18106G, exterior paint needed. I actually cited this case on July 28th, 21. Certified mail was received on uh, September 11th of 21, and the property was posted September 17th of 21. No contact with the owners of the property, so I'm asking 30 days to comply or $100 a day after that. <clears throat> is the lawn still overgrown? Yes, it is. Because it looks kind of mowed there. Can we go back to the uh, to the ten, the October? October ten. Uh -huh. that, that, oh, that's the that doesn't look like excessive no, growth anymore. <laughs> Just the the paint exterior paint, I assume. Not the roof. Yeah, the roof, and then got algae on the front of the property the building. All right, I, I, I will grant you the paint, but yeah, that doesn't, it doesn't look yeah. like excessive growth anymore. <laughs> yeah, I got you. Thank All you. All right. 
All right, in case uh, CE2107032 I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient on the property in violation of 18106G. I give the respondent 30 days to come to compliance or what were you seeking, $50? Uh, 100. Or $100 per day, Misha. Agenda item number 18, case number CE2107032 case address 712 Park Place. Don Williams again, 712 Park Place, cited for a 94-442-E landscaping, this is swell, and 18106L, which is landscape requirements on the property itself. It was actually cited July 28th of 21, certified mail sent and received September 9th of 21, and the property was posted September 17th of 21. <clears throat> no contact with the owners of the property. It is still in the same condition as of yesterday. I'm sorry? Same condition as of yesterday, but they did pull up the swell area a little bit. I guess they're going to start actually putting landscape in, but it's not completed. It looks like they just put, what, mulch down everywhere? Yes, the, the whole property was mulched, and now they actually removed it from the swell, so I assume they're going to be installing grass at some point. Presumably the city is not of the belief that <laughs> no, that's not landscaping mulch. Yeah, they need they need a they need grass, huh? And how long did you want to give them? Thirty days, one hundred dollars a day. And you've had no contact with the owner? None. Certified mail and posting? Yes. All right. In case C E two one zero seven zero three two nine, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice sufficient to find the property in violation of ninety four 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 two E and eighteen one oh six one. One respondent has 30 days to come to compliance or fine of $100 per day mission. Agenda item number 19, case number CE2107035, case address 925 Charles Street has complied. Agenda item number 20, case number CE2107033, case address 1018 Adams Street. Cassandra St. Hilaire, code enforcement with the city of, with the city of West Palm. This property was cited on July 29th. Property was post, property in City Hall were posted July 30th. Certified mail was received on August 3rd. I've had contact with the, uh, gen, the Johnny, who is the general contractor for the property. Property was cited for 18100, 18103B, 18103C, 18103E, 18103I, 18162A, 2232A, 78-1, 9482A, and 9471C. At this time, the city is requesting an additional 30 days for or $200 per day for code sections 18162A, 2232A, 1813I, 1813E, 1800B, and 1813C, and 10 days or $100 per day for code sections 9471C, 78-1, and 94482A. So you want to give them 30 days for everything except for the obstruction of the right-of-way, the parking requirements, and the outdoor storage? Yes, sir. All right. And you say you've had contact with the owner here? Just the general contractor um, that was supposedly um, going to the property to fix the windows the, and all the other violations in there, but that was um, since August 17th was the last time we spoke and nothing else came of it. Have no you seen any evidence that they're actually fixing anything? Have you seen Nothing. Um, I did stop by, and the tenants did say no one has came yet. So, so as far as I know, they have not addressed the, any of these things. You've spoken okay. with the tenants? The, the tenants, the yes. And uh, so there, are, there currently are tenants on this property? Yes, there are. And there is no rental license in the system? No. All right, let's see. What's the egress issue? Um, in one of the pictures, as you can see with, uh, with the stairs, there's no handrails or anything, and it's kind of like not leveled. So if you were to walk outside of it, it's easy for anyone to fall. The picture will show a better description of it if it pops up. I tell you, this property got you like a whole bunch of code sections. It has huh? a lot of pictures in here. Uh, I'll let you know. Give me a no, keep going. It's the stair. You'll see it. It's, it's the stairwell. It's, it's in the forward. beginning. It's one of the first pictures when I initially went out there. 
Yeah, around that area. There's a better angle though, where you can actually see it from as you're walking. No, no, that's going in. Keep going. You'll see it. It's coming up. Keep going. I'll tell you when to stop. Okay, go back. <laughs> go back. No, yeah, just go back. Right there. Uh, okay. That's in one of the bedrooms. Or, um, as you can see, there's no handrails, nothing to seem like to even support anyone trying to head out of there. All right, tell me about the roof. The walls roof? and foundation issue. The foundation. Um, as you can see, like there's um, rotted wood around it. Um, they're missing some planks in um, some of the areas. Even the uh, frame around the doors are missing, um, and they weren't done properly. Okay, interior walls. Yeah. Um, interior walls. Yeah, that can't be good. Oh, the interior walls. I'm sorry. Yeah, d just tell me. <laughs> yeah, so um, when I went to inspect the property, there, um, there were in the ceiling, there were holes and stuff in there. There were leaks um, that you can try to see. They try to patch up, but they were, didn't do properly, so it was still coming out. So those would need to be repaired as well. I think I saw from your pictures that the problem with the windows is that they are not watertight. Yeah, well, not really. They're, they're missing windows. In one of the pictures, I wasn't even sure. You can see, like, I'm, with my gloves, I had to really... Oh, there's Touch, no window there. Yeah, they're missing windows. There's people living in that house? There's people living in there. Oi. Uh, what's 18103i, the equipment maintenance? Equipment, um, so the refrigerator, stove, and um, even some of the ACs aren't working in the units. Okay, rental license we already talked about. Yeah. Uh, the, the obstruction of the wide array, was that the car parked? The cars, the, yeah, blocking the, um, sidewalks the and sidewalk? everything. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. Yeah, there goes the window <laughs> right there. And then you had cars parked on the grass, was Parking that? Parking on the grass as well. They're side, there's cars everywhere. And I think I, I saw the outsource yeah. storage like three times now, so I think we're good <laughs> on that one. All right, in case uh, CE21070373, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice this sufficient, I find the property in violation of 18100, 18103B, 18103C, 18103E, 18103I, 18162A, and 2232A. Respondent has. 30 days to bring those into compliance or a fine of $200 per day may issue. Make further finding of the property is in violation of 78-1, 9442A, and 9471C. Respondent has 10 days to bring those into compliance. Did you want a separate fine for those or uh, the, the Yeah, 200 one? for the 30 days and 100 for the 10 day uh, violation. Fine of up to $100 per day may issue on those. Okay. Agenda item number 21, case number CE21080056, case address 20. 2017 Beautiful Avenue. Cassandra St. Hilaire, code officer with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on August 5th. Property and City Hall were posted on August 11th. Um, certified mail was received on August 10th. I've had no contact with the property owner. The property was cited for 1816A, 1816B, 1862A, 18215B, 2232A, 74-4C4, 74-4C5, and 9471C. Um, at this time, they have complied with Code Sections 941C. Um, the city is requesting an additional 30 days for Code Sections 18162A and 2232A, or $200 per day until compliance is achieved, and for the remaining violations, 10 days, $100 a day until compliance. Is that you got it. So you're seeking 30 days for the rental license or $200 per day? Yeah, rental license is Seeking 10 days for everything else? And 10 days for everything else because it's mostly like landscape issues, needing to trim, cut the grass and everything. All right, let's see. Clean and sanitary, that's the debris on the property? Mm hmm What's the excessive growth? Oh, uh, you'll see. <laughs> it's right. leading into, this was actually a complaint from the neighbors that, you know. The forest that is the backyard. Yeah, it's like a little forest wow. area. That does need a little uh, work there, huh? And a little TLC. All right. Trees and hedges. Okay. In the right of way, I see that. Center row. Okay, I see that. Yeah, I'll bet the neighbors aren't too happy, huh? Have you had any contact with the owner in this case? No contact with the owner. And um, honestly, the only reason I'm not asking to abate is because I don't really see how we'll get access to the property. 
Um, so on the uh, the cleanup, you're seeking an abatement because of the overgrowth? I did want an abatement, but I'm not sure how the city is going to get access to the property. We I don't think we'll be able to. It's fenced in, and there might be, uh, from the complaint, um, some activities going in there. Well, the city can, I mean, I can authorize the city to enter the property. If there, if the city believes there's a health, safety, and welfare issue with this property, I can authorize I mean, the city to enter it. If that, yeah. Yeah. So tell me, tell me what, tell me about the, the health safety concerns that you have. Well, it, um, not only is it badly overgrown, like I said, um, it's going into neighboring properties and the complaint that I got that day was the lady was, she was even showing me like animals and stuff that was coming from their little area into hers. And, you know, I think that. So vermin and animals are coming vermins, from? There were rats. I oh, barely goodness. wanted to be there. Well, that, that sounds like health safety to me. Um, all right, so this is what I, I will do in this case. Uh, in case, uh, and you've had no contact with the owner? None at all. Is there somebody living there? Yes, there are. They just don't answer the door? I mean, they'll, they stand outside. <laughs> but they won't talk to you? <laughs> Not really. All right, in case uh, CE21080056, I make the following findings of fact and law. I find notice is sufficient. I found the property in violation of 18162. Well, let me just ask because I didn't ask. There, there's tenants on the property? There are tenants. Yeah. And how do you, how do you know that they're tenants? Uh, I mean, I've seen them going in inside the house. I, we haven't really had a conversation, but there are people in there. I don't know if they're tenants or vagrants, I should say. Mm, somebody living there. And it's, yeah. And it's in the name of a S and C D home care for them, right? It's an LLC, yeah. So. I don't know. Is the city satisfied that that's ten that's sufficient for tenants? I'm putting the city attorney on the. So it's owned by a company and people live there. Do you think that's sufficient basis for a rental license violation? I do. I can look up more if you want. Um, I doubt that there's a homestead on this. No, there's not. Okay. All right. All right, so let me redo this. In case CE21080056, I make the following findings of fact on life on notice is sufficient. I found the property in violation of 18162A and 2232A. Respondent has 30 days to come to compliance on those or a fine of up to $200 per day may issue. I further find this the respondent is in violation of 18106A, 18106B, um, 744C4, 744C5. I make further finding that said violations constitute a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the city of West Palm Beach. I order the respondents to come into compliance within 10 days. In the absence of compliance, I authorize the city to enter the property and abate any and all violations. I hereby assess the cost of said abatement against the property and property owner. Thank you. Agenda item number 22, case number CE21080347, case address 401 16th Street. Cassandra St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on August 21st, certified mail was signed for on September 1st. Property and City Hall were posted August 31st. Um, I've had contact with the lawyer, Louis Stinson. Um, the property was cited for 1816A, 1816B, 18215B, 74-483, 74-4C4, and 74-4C5. Um, at this time, the city is requesting an additional 30 days or $200 per day until compliance is achieved. And the reason why we're asking for such a long time is because uh, it's Australian pines on this property. It's several of them, and it will take them quite some time to try and remove all of them. So, so you're seeking 30 days? 30 days, just or $200 a day. And you said you were in contact with the lawyer that represented the owner in this case? Yeah, the lawyer, Louis Stinson. And did he indicate that they were willing to bring this property into compliance? That's what he stated. All right, let's see. We got clean and sanitary. So uh, is, uh, did you observe trash and debris on the property? Yes, always. Excessive growth. That's the Australian pines in the Australian back? Australian pines and just other regular trees. Um, there's a picture you'll see. It's so bad that even um, in the That's back, it's bad. like falling onto cars sidewalks, everything. Let's see, garbage, litter, and refuse. You observe that. Yeah. Property and vegetation is hanging into the public right-of-way. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see that. 
Filipino, okay. All right, in case CE21080347, I make the following findings of fact on life on notice is sufficient to find the property in violation of 18106A, 18106B, 18215B, 744A3, 744C4, and 744C5. Respondent has 30 days to come to compliance or find about the $200 per day issue. Agenda item number 23, case number CE21080349, case address 401 16th Street. Cassandra St. Hilaire, code enforcement with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was signed on August 27th. Uh, August 27th. Certified mail was signed for on August, um, September 1st. Property in City Hall was posted September 3rd. Um, I've had contact again with the lawyer, Louis Stinson. Um, the property was cited for 1813J, 1813B, 7434A1H, 78 1, 944454I, and 94446 2. The city is requesting an additional 30 days or $100 per day for code sections 1813J, 1813B, 944454I, and 94446 2 and 10 days for code section 78-1 or $50 per day until compliance is achieved. I might have to repeat that. <laughs> so you want 10 days for the trash can and obstruction of the right of way and 30 days for the remaining? Yeah. All right, let's see what we got here. Are we in the right pictures? Because these look yeah, like this is the same property. It was just a lot of violations. I had to. Oh, these are two separate cases on the same. Yeah, property? separate cases on the same property. All right. Let's see. Exterior paint. Yeah. Um. The last picture, as you can see, there's like a shed area that's like in really bad condition, and then even in the front that needs painting. A lot of rotted wood needs to be replaced on that as well. All right. Roof. In fact, I saw the roof. I've seen that roof picture now. Three or four times, so I think we're good on that. Yeah, four, four, five. Section the right prohibited away, trees. I saw. Trash can, I saw. What's the? Tell me about the prohibited trees. Are, are we saying the? It's Australia? the Australian pines. Um, obviously, we. Um, that's not something they could abate or remove. So that's why that code is on the. Is on the other. Oh, it's so how do the they comply case. with that? They remove the tree. They need to remove it. Yeah, it's prohibited. Australian pines. What's the? Name that can't it. be easy to do. Those are big trees. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. You. Those that can't be easy to do. Those are fairly large trees, huh? They they are, but they've had some time to at least contact and say that they would need additional time if not. And look, and like I said, if you look at the um, this came as a complaint as well. If you look at the rear of the property, it's like the sidewalks are coming up as well because of the tree, and they're falling to. They're not even cleaning it up. You know, so it does need to be removed. They're prohibited. All right, fair enough. Um, and you've talked to the lawyer about these, all these problems. Yep. Okay. Did he uh, request? I'll get. I'll tell you exactly when. September seventeenth, we spoke. Did uh, this lawyer, he or she, request a certain amount of time to do this? Or? No, they said it. Um, he told me it would be taken care of, hoping not to have to come to hearing. But as you can that see, was in September. <laughs> it's still going on. So they've already had almost a month. They had more than a month. It was um, cited on August. I'll tell you right now. Give me August twenty seventh. All right. In case CE two one zero eight zero three four nine, I make the following findings of fact: and life I notice is sufficient. I found the property in violation of eighteen one zero three J, eighteen one zero three B, ninety four four forty five four I, and ninety four 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 six two. Respondent will have thirty days to bring those into compliance, or a fine of one hundred dollars per day from the issue. Make further finding that the property is in violation of seventy four thirty four A one H and seventy eight dash one. Respondent has ten days to bring that into compliance, or a fine of one hundred fifty dollars per day from the issue. Thank you. Agenda item number 24, case number CE21090223, case address 1331 Wellington Street has complied. Agenda item number 25, case number CE21090225, case address 1314 Wellington Street has also complied. Agenda item number 26, case number CE21090226, case address 1330. 
1311 Wellington Street has complied. Agenda item number 27, case number CE2109-0243, case address 1225 Wellington Street. Michael Williams, Code Enforcement Officer, City of West Palm Beach, property 1225 Wellington Street was initially cited on 922-21. Certified mail was sent on 922-21. Uh, we do have a signed certified mail receipt on file. Property as well as City Hall uh, was posted on 921 uh, of 21. Um, the property was cited for 26-32-B repeat um, uh, violator. The city would like to remove that um, as they are not a repeat. Um, they were previously cited um, for uh, 34102A, but they did come into compliance. So the city would like to remove 26-35-B. Uh, they were also cited for 34-102-A uh, junk vehicle and 94-482-A uh, parking lot in disrepair. As of last evening, the um, all violations still remain. Uh, the city would like to grant 30 additional days in order to comply or a fine of $100 per day be imposed. Okay, so we have... Is 30 days a sufficient amount of time to fix the, the parking lot? Um, in my view, yes. Um, it's a relatively small area, um, but um, the city would be amenable to giving uh, some, some additional time, uh, 45 days. And I guess hard to argue that's not a junk and abandoned vehicle, huh? Right. Um, that was the, the, the vehicle that was there when they were previously cited. They removed the vehicle from the property altogether and then um, back and now it's back again. All right. And you've had no contact with the owner? N no contact whatsoever. And you said uh, certified mail as well as the posting that I just saw? That's correct. All right, in case CE2109-0243, make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient. I find the property in violation of 34102A and 94482A. As to 34102A, I give the respondent 30 days to come into compliance or a fine of $100 per day issue. As to 94482A, I give the respondent 45 days or a fine of up to $100 per day issue. Thank you. Agenda item number 29, case number CE2108-0237, case address 344 Pilgrim Road. Good morning. <clears throat> Richard Pasmino, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This property was cited on August 17th. Um, certified mail was sent out August 18th and received August 23rd. In addition, the property and city hall were posted August 25th, 2021. This property was cited for 2232A and 18162A. Um, certificate of use and rental license required. Uh, this was found online, a listing to be rented, and they they also had a for rent sign at the property. As of this morning, I checked the link that is in the attachments. The advertisement for rent is still active. Um, I've had no contact. There's been no changes. Uh, there's no application or rental license in our system. Uh, the city is recommending 30 additional days for this property to come into compliance with those issues, or we're asking for $150 a day fine. Is the service address on this case different from the residential address? Uh, I don't have that with me. Uh, yeah, address on Papa is in Nashville. Is there anyone living there that you can tell? What's that? Is, is there any evidence of anyone living there? I guess um, ultimately it doesn't really matter if they're representing. Yeah, they're advertising for rent. Yeah. I can't tell. Looks better in the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely got their angles right.
All right, and as far as you know, the rental advertisements were active as of today? Yeah, I checked the link this morning. It's in the attachments, and it's same same thing still, same, same price, still listed for rent. So they are representing the property as being available for rent? Yes. All right. In case uh, CE21080237, I make the following findings of fact and law. If my notice is sufficient, I find the property in violation of 2232A and 18162A. Respondent has 30 days to come to compliance or fine of up to $200 per day measure. Agenda item number 30, case number CE21080305, case address 722 Glen Ridge Drive. Richard Pasmino, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This property was cited on August 23rd. Certified mail was sent out August 24th. Uh, it was received August 28th. In addition, the property and City Hall were both posted on September 8th, 2021. This property was cited for Building codes 105.1, 110.3, um, failure to secure building permit and required inspections for a fence, and 94302B1, um, fence excessive height. It was six feet in the front setback. Um, it has to be four feet. I did have contact with the owners. Um, they understand, understood the violations. And since contacting, um, the fence has been cut in the front setback to be under four feet in height. So code section 94302B1 is in compliance. Uh, they applied for a permit late September. The permit is still pending plan review. So the other two code sections remain. Um, the city's recommending 45 additional days or a $50 a day fine. See, this is why we get building permits, so we don't put up fences that are in violation of the code. <laughs> oh. How many of these cases would we avoid if they applied for the permit and got the information that, no, you can't build it that way? A lot. All right, in case CE21080305, make the following findings of fact on the life I notice is sufficient to find the property in violation of 105.1, 110.3, respond us 45 days to come to compliance or a fine of $50 per day may issue. Agenda item number 31, case number CE21080358, case address 4707 Garden Avenue. Richard Pasmino, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This property was cited on August 30th. Certified mail was sent out August 31st and received September 3rd. In addition, the property and city hall were both posted September 8th, 2021. This property was cited for building code section 105.1, 110.3, um, failure to secure building permit for a new wood fence and required inspections. 34102A, a junk abandoned vehicle and Florida building code 105.4.1.3, expired permits. I have had contact with the owner um, who is planning on selling the vehicle, but since, since the case started, the vehicle is still there as of yesterday. Um, the expired permits are closed, so the last section is in compliance, uh, the 105.4.1.3. Um, the owner said he would apply for a, a fence permit. There's no application or permit in our system yet. So the, the 105.1, 110.3, and 34.102A do remain. The city's recommending 30 additional days to come into compliance or a fine of $100 a day. So that's a new fence? Oh, I guess I can see uh, the, the side of the fence. Yeah, it's new, right? the south side. So it's right, so right there. Is, they're starting to put it up. Car, so, okay. All right, in case CE21080358, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient. I find the property in violation of 105.1, 110.3, 34102A. Respondent has 30 days to come to compliance or fine of up to $100 per day mission. Agenda item number 32, case number CE21080359, case address 5415 Columbus Road. Richard Pasmino, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. Uh, this property was cited August 30th. Certified mail sent out August 31st and received September 3rd. Um, in addition, the property and city hall were posted on September 8th, 2021. This property was cited for 18103B. Uh, they had damaged gutters hanging off the roof. 
34102A, they had numerous inoperative vehicles all over the yard. 944462, landscape maintenance. 94482, unpaved parking. And 9471C, outdoor storage. I've had no contact um, as of yesterday. All violations are complied except for code section 9471C, outdoor storage. And the city is recommending 14 additional days to comply the outside storage, or we're asking for a $50 a day fine. What's the outside storage? Um, right in front of the front door, they're keeping some like cleaning supplies. It was a lot more at first. I, I think they were doing like a car dealership or storing it maybe to clean the cars. Um, there's a photo from yesterday. Some of that stuff, it, it's still there as of yesterday. Hmm. They're just keeping it right in the front. They get all the hard stuff, huh? Yeah, they took all the cars away. There were a lot right they, there. They, uh, they put some new sod in? It was overgrown and not being maintained. Um, the places where the cars were parked, it looks like it grew back. All right, in case uh, CE21080359, I make the following findings of fact on life. I notice is sufficient. Found the property in violation of 9471C. Responded as 14 days to come to compliance or fine of up to $50 per day mission. Agenda item number 33, case number CE21080361, case address 424 Nottingham Boulevard. Richard Pesmino, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This property was cited August 31st. Certified mail was sent out September 1st and received September 3rd. In addition, the property and City Hall were both posted on September 8th, 2021. This property is a vacant lot, is cited for uh, clean and sanitary conditions, excessive growth, and a fence uh, maintenance. There's a damaged fence that's falling over. I'm, I've had no contact, and as of yesterday, there's no changes. Um, the overgrowth is even worse. the fence is still falling over. Um, the city's recommending 14 additional days to comply with the overgrowth, or we're asking for an order to abate the health and safety welfare issues with the overgrowth. It's in between two rental properties. Um, and then 30 days for the fence, or $50 a day. And I've had no contact. So there's a fence on one part of the property, but not? Yeah, that, so that's the rental property. That black chain link fence is part of that blue house. And then the vacant lot starts where the chain link ends. The, the wooden fence to the right is, is the fence that's falling over. So it's not the chain link. The chain link fence belongs the, to the other property. Yeah, the chain link fence is good and it's the other property. So where's the fence that's falling apart? The, There'll be a zoomed in picture right there in the back. Ah, there it is. And the owner was telling me it's not their fence, the, the owner of the other rental property. Yeah, that doesn't look too good. You, you have no um, contact with the owner of this vacant lot? No contact. Hamed Rodriguez? No. All right. But you, uh, you posted the property? Yes. And you sent certified, I heard you say you sent certified mail. And did somebody sign for the certified mail? It was received, I think it said COVID received. They mm. don't require a signature. Okay, in case CE21080361, I make the following findings of fact on law. If my notice is sufficient, I find the property in violation of 18106A, 18106B, and 94302A4. As to 94302A4, where the respondent to come into compliance within 30 days or fine of up to $50 per day may issue. As to 18106A and 18106B, I guess I actually need some testimony from you about the health safety. Yes, it, it's, it's overgrown. It's in between two rental properties. Um, it, you believe it constitutes habitat for vermin? Definitely. It's a great habitat for vermin. All right, as to 18106A and 18106B, I make further findings said violations constitute a threat to the health, safety, and welfare of the city of West Palm Beach. I order the respondent to come into compliance within 14 that, days. Is 14 what days. Or I authorize the city to enter the property and abate any and all violations. Costs of abatement will be charged against the city. I'm sorry, charge against the respondent and the, uh, the property. Agenda item number 34, case number CE21090100, case address 316 Southern Boulevard has complied. 
Agenda item number 35, case number CE2109-0129, case address 944 McIntosh Street has complied. Agenda item number 36, case number CE2109-0132, 5600 Parker Avenue has complied. Agenda item number 37, case number CE2109-0203, case address 944 Francis Street has also complied. Agenda item number 38, case number CE2107-0362, case address 10925 Grande Boulevard. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. Um, this is a uh, reschedule. It was originally cited July 29th. It was recited September 17th. Uh, the property at 10. 925 Grande, Grande Boulevard, <clears throat> excuse me, was cited for tree trimming standards, hat racking prohibited, and palm tree trimming standards. Uh, property was posted along with City Hall on September 20th. Certified mail was sent September 17th. Certified mail has been returned September 21st. Um, I have been in contact with the property owner. Um, he's still trying to obtain an arborist um, report outlining the state of the uh, tree. So with that being said, the city's recommending 60 days to obtain the, that arborist report or replacement of the tree or, or a one-time fine of $250. So you want to give them 60 days to obtain the report, replace the tree? Or yes. So um, um, if the, the, the arborist report outlines that the tree can be rehabbed, the city will accept that. Um, but if it's determined that it needs to replace, then it needs to replace. All right, let me do it like this, all right. In case CE2107036, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient. Find the property in violation of 944462B1, 944462B3, and 944462B5. Give the respondent 60 days to obtain an arborist report confirming that the, the tree can be rehabilitated or replace the tree, one of those two, or a fine of 250 or one-time fine of $250 shall be assessed. Agenda item number 39, case number CE2108093, case address 4012. Heath Circle South. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. Um, the property at 4012 Heath Circle South. Um, this is a reschedule. It was originally cited August 6th. It was recited September 17th. Um, the property and City Hall was posted September 20th. Certified mail was sent September 17th. The property was cited for roof repair. Um, I have been in contact with the property owner. He's um, fighting with his insurance company to get the roof repaired um, and is requesting an extension. With, with that being said, the city's recommending 180 days to come into compliance or $50 a day until compliance is achieved. That blue tarp still up there? Excuse me? Is that blue tarp still up on the roof? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. In case CE2108093, make the following findings of fact on the life. I notice it's sufficient to find the property in violation of 18103B. Respondent has 180 days to bring the property in compliance or a fine of up to $50 per day, Mansion. Agenda item number 40, case number CE2108032, case address 13216, Glenmore Drive. City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On August 11th, the property at 13216 Glenmore Drive was cited for clean and sanitary, mold found in unit, uh, rental license violation, and certificate of use. The property alongside City Hall was posted August 19th. Uh, certified mail was sent August 12th. Certified mail was returned 
August 16th. Um, the property owner has since submitted the application for the rental license violation certificate of use. The inspection can't be conducted because he's still still doing the mold mediation on the unit. Um, with that being said, the city is recommending 45 days to come into compliance or $200 a day until compliance is achieved. Yeah, those mold things can take a while. Yeah, yeah it does. But he's working on it, right? Yes, he is. Um, I did receive an email from him on the 23rd, September 23rd. All right, in case CE2108032, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice this sufficient, I find the property in violation of the listed code sections. I give respondent 45 days to come to compliance or a fine of up to $200 per day, Mish. Agenda item number 41, case number CE2108038, case address 2300 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard, Unit 218. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. This is also a rescheduled. Um, it was originally cited. Uh, August 11th, it was recited September 16th. The property at 2300 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard, Unit 218, was cited for business tax receipt and certificate of use. Uh, the property, the, the business and city hall was posted September 21st. Certified mail was sent September 21st. Certified mail was received September 23rd. Um, I have been in contact with the business owner. They have since submitted an application for the certificate of use and business tax receipt. Um, however, they're still waiting on some correspondence from the health department to move forward with the inspection. Um, with that being said, City's recommending 30 days to come into compliance or a one time fine of $250 and $100 a day on the COU. Optimum. Look. That's the business. Say it again. Optimum. Look. That's the name of the business. Yes. That's the name of the business. All right. And so you want to give them 30 days to obtain. Yes. Um, I mean, she's working diligently to uh, come into compliance. Um, the only thing is. Is she's waiting on his correspondence that she's clear and clear with the health department because um, this was a complaint from the health department originally. Um, so, so that's what prompted us to go out and investigate the business. Body contouring, huh? Yeah, she's doing a lot of stuff in there. So you I know mean, what? It caught wind I, of the I'm health department. I'm not going to ask, and I don't want to know. But, um, <laughs> I mean, it caught wind of the health department. Um, so she's backed off of a lot of the things that, that she's offering with the business. So I just want correspondence from the health department. All right. So you want to give her 30 days or a fine of $250 per day? No, you... one time fine of $250 for the business tax receipt and $100 a day for the COU. Okay. All right. All right. KCE21080. One three eight. I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient to find the property in violation of 2232A and 82144. As to 82144, um, a one-time fine of $250 if not obtained within 30 days. As to 2232A, a fine of $100 per day after 30 days. Agenda item number 42, case number CE21080171, case address 1817 37th Street. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On August 12th, the property at 1817 37th Street was cited for an operative vehicle. Uh, garbage can placement, landscape mu must be sawed, landscape, landscaping of swell and parkways, an operative vehicle, unpaved parking, and outdoor storage. As of yesterday, the property has come into compliance with the inoperative vehicle, the garbage can placement, landscaping of soil, unpaved parking, and outdoor storage. The only violation that remains is the sodding of the property. Uh, 
the property the property notice was hand delivered as well as posted at city hall certified mail was sent august 13th um, i did make contact with the property owner um, as we stated she's still working on the completing the sod she started but i mean there's still a small portion that needs to be completed so with that being said, city's recommending 30 days to come into compliance or $50 a day until compliance is achieved. So the only thing remaining here is that... A little small patch of, of, patch of unsod, uh, unsodded landscape there. Yeah, right there. Okay. And looks like she started putting down sod, looks like. Yeah, that. you can see the rake and stuff out there. She's working on it. All right, in case CE2108071, I make the following findings of fact in life. I notice it's sufficient. I find the property in violation of 94442C1. Respondent has 30 days to come to compliance or fine of $50 per day admission. Agenda item number 44, case number CE2108-0248, case address 7957 via Villaggio. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Co-Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On August 17th, the property at 7957 via Villaggio was cited for tree trimming standards and hat, hat racking prohibited. This is the, the property trees, huh? as well as City Hall was posted August 31st. Certified mail was sent August 18th. Certified mail was received August 28th. Um, I have been in contact with the property owner. He's also trying to obtain an arborist report stating that the tree can be rehabbed or it may, be, it may need to be replaced. With that being said, city's recommending 60 days to provide necessary paperwork or replacement of said tree or a one-time fine of $250. This is the week for trees, huh? <laughs> they always <laughs> land in my lap, man. <laughs> Yeah, that looks like a hat rack, doesn't it? Um, all right, in case uh, CE2108024A, I make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice this sufficient, I find the property in violation of 944462B1 and 944462B3, or the respondent uh, to obtain a arborist report indicating that the tree can be rehabbed or to replace the tree within 60 days or find one time fine of $250. Agenda item number 45, case number CE2108-0250, case address 831, Village Boulevard. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On August 18th, the property at 831 Village Boulevard was cited for clean and sanitary, excessive growth, and business tax receipt violation. Uh, the business... The property was posted as well as City Hall on August 19th. Certified mail was sent August 19th. Certified mail was received August 25th. Um, I have since been in contact with the property manager. The property has come, come into compliance with the clean and sanitary and the excessive growth. The only thing that remains is the business tax receipt to lease space. Um, uh, the property manager is aware of what, what is required. They're just waiting for corporate to fill out the said application to move forward. Uh, with that being said, city's recommending 30 days to come into compliance or $100 a day until compliance is achieved. They are leasing the property out? Or they intend to lease the property out? Why Say it again? They, I'm sorry, why do they need a business license? It looks vacant. Huh? Basically, ownership is just dragging their feet with filling out the, um, the, the, the proper paperwork to get the business tax receipt that's required. Um, so the property manager did reach out to me f to request additional time. So that's why the city's, city's recommending 30 days. But they do under they they are in agreement that they need a business license they do agree that they need a business license okay. they're just trying to hash out <laughs> who needs to fill it out so i don't know what that means i mean you own the property have the property owner fill out the application all right in case uh, ce2108025 i make the 
following findings of fact on the life I notice is sufficient. I find the property in violation of 82144. Respondent has 30 days to come into compliance or fine of up to $100 per day. May I issue. Agenda item number 46, case number CE2108-0273, case address 2020 Chagall Circle. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. The property at 2020 Chagall Circle was cited for artificial turf, remove artificial turf from, from front setback and replace with sod. Uh, location of artificial turf. Um, the property and city hall was posted August 24th. Certified mail was sent August 20th. Certified mail was received August 23rd. As of yesterday, a majority of the turf has been removed, but there is a, a small portion that still remains. Um, the area also needs to be irrigated and sodded. Uh, um, with that taken into consideration, city's recommending 60 days to come into compliance or $100 a day until compliance is achieved. So they still have some of the saw to take, uh, some of the artificial to take up? Yeah, they, I mean, they've since removed the artificial turf, but there's still a little puff left where the, um, the entrance box is, the, there's still artificial turf okay. below that. So I mean, it's I, I two little in, portions that need to remove. I assume you've been in contact with the HOA? Yes, the HOA did, uh, the, the president did reach out um, I also received an email from a, a real estate attorney, but I mean, it was brief. He was just um, requesting if there was an open case on the, the property. I did inform him there was. I thought someone would be here to represent the HOA. See, he was an attorney, but no one showed up. Okay, in case CE210, 80273 make the following findings of fact and law. If I notice this sufficient on the property in violation of 944451A4 and 9445151A, respond to 60 days to come to compliance or a fine of up to $100 per day. May I say? Um, also, I do want to go on record to um, request that the irrigation will require a permit. Agenda item number 47, case number CE2108-0326, case address 22102 Glenmore Drive. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarlane. On August 24th, the property at 22102 Glenmore Drive was cited for rental license violation and certificate of use. Um, the property was confirmed being rented by, by management, and I did make contact with the prior um, tenant. Uh, the unit was posted along with City Hall on August 25th. Certified mail was sent August 25th. Certified mail was returned August 30th. Um, I've had no contact with the property owner. With that being said, City's recommending 30 days to come into compliance or $200 a day until compliance is achieved. Officer McFarland, how did you confirm that the property was being rented? I confirmed with the management office on site, as well as making contact with the uh, tenant. But no response from Aloha? Say it again? You got no response from Aloha properties? No, I have not. Right. Did they, uh, was certified mail, uh, did they accept it? Uh, it seems like it was returned on August 30th. But you posted the property on City Hall? I sure did. All right. All right, case CE2108032, I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice is sufficient from the property in violation of the listed code sections. Respondent has 30 days to come to compliance or a fine of up to $200 per day, Mr. And item number 48, case number CE2108055, case address 430 South Chillingsworth Drive. 
Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On August 26th, the property at 430 South Chillingworth Drive was cited for excessive growth, clean and sanitary, overgrown vegetation in the rear of the property, uh, address characters, address character standards, and outdoor storage. Property and City Hall was posted September 7th. Certified mail was sent August 30th. Certified mail was received September 1st. The property has since come into compliance with the excessive growth. The clean and sanitary still remains. The overgrown vegetation in the rear still remains. Address characters still remain and the outdoor storage in the rear of the property also remain. Um, with that being said, city is recommending 30 days to come into compliance or $50 a day until compliance is achieved. All right, let's see. So clean and sanitary, you observe trash and debris on the property? Yes, there's a small planter um, right by the door that's filled with trash. Overgrowth, I can see. Uh, I presume that you observed that there were no uh, address characters on the structure. There it is. Yeah. They're kind of using that planter like a uh, trash can, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, okay, and that's the outdoor storage? Those. Yeah, in the rear. Okay. All right, KCE 21080355. I make the following findings of fact and life. I notice it's sufficient. I find the property in violation of 18106A, 744C3, 78.6. And 9471C. The respondent has 30 days to come to compliance or find about the $50 per day measure. Agenda item number 49, case number CE21080356, case address 500 South Chillingsworth Drive has complied. Agenda item number 50, case number CE21090099, case address 10 Firestone Circle. Good morning, City of West Palm Beach Code Compliance Officer Paul McFarland. On September 9th, the property at 10 Firestone Circle was cited for landscape maintenance, clean dead vegetation along Palm Line, and overgrowth, trim, trim all vegetation along fence line. Uh, the property as well as City Hall was posted September 16th. Certified mail was sent September 10th. Certified mail was returned September 16th. Um, I have been in contact with the property owner. Um, some of the stuff has been cleaned up, but um, there's still some minor stuff that needs to be done. I did speak with both property owners yesterday at the property, and they were requesting 15 days to get their landscaper to come out there and finish trimming and, and cleaning up all the dead vegetation. So with that being said, city's recommending 15 days to come into compliance or $50 a day until compliance is achieved. Okay, it looks like they've made some progress. Yeah, they're coming along. I mean, they just missed some stuff. All right, in case uh, CE 21090099, I make the following findings of fact and life I notice is sufficient. Found the property in violation of 18106K and 744C3. Responded as 15 days to come to compliance or a fine of up to $50 per day, may issue. Thank you. I think that's it till other matters, right? Correct. What time is other matter? Are we still scheduled for 1130? Yes. All right, so let's, um, let's adjourn until then.